truth, and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon. And you are tuning in to another episode of the Brother Leon Show. Let's go in this piece today because we are going to talk briefly about freedom and especially sexual freedom this morning. Let's go. The one thing that I want you guys to understand and know, I want you to get my book, first of all. Let No Man Put Asunder, Kick the Clergy Out of Your Bedroom. And I wrote that book a few years ago to address a problem that I saw then and a problem that I'm seeing right now. Because the one thing that you have to understand is this, is that when you make that covenant of marriage between you and your spouse, that covenant is between you and your spouse only. And I base the book off of the scripture that marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And so the question that I began to ask when I wrote the book, what is it that a married couple can do sexually in their bedroom, in the privacy of their own home that could send them to hell? And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is that when I searched the scriptures, I did not find anything. Now, granted, I have talked about this issue numerous times. If you want to go back and look at some past episodes, go to the one where I was on Clubhouse with Alicia Bennett, where I, where I did the episode. It was entitled, Christians Say the Darndest Things About Sex. Because the one thing that the Christian church says is that you need to wait before marriage to have sex. And I get that. But the problem arises is when I make the covenant and when I am married, now you're telling me what type of sex that I'm supposed to have. We have people saying that oral sex is a sin, but they have no scriptural backing for it. All they have is their personal revelation. And I get that because it does say in Romans, if you think, and I'm paraphrasing scripture, that if you think that a thing is unclean, It is unclean to you. So the one thing about this listener is that if you hear rhetoric or narratives like this, know that it is their personal conviction. It is not God's revelation. Personal conviction. Personal conviction when it comes to oral. Personal conviction when it comes to anal. Personal conviction when it comes to BDSM and sex toys. Because the crazy thing about all of this is that if I am not having any emotional affairs, physical affairs, I'm being monogamous with my spouse, what is it that I could bring into my home that will cause me to go to hell? Now, granted, I don't even bring pornography in the home, so that's not an issue. Because it's me and my spouse. So if there's no pornography, there's no emotional or physical affairs or open relationships. No one is a part of our covenant. It's just me and the spouse. What is it that I could do that could send me to hell or bring the devil into my house? And the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that they can't give you scriptural reference for it. And that is the thing that you have to realize. It'll be everybody's revelation, or we can say opinion, personal conviction, personal theology, personal belief. And I'm talking about married. I'm not talking about single. I'm not talking about fornication. 
I am talking about marriage. And so the crazy thing is, is that when you allow people, they call themselves watching for your soul. Now they police in your bedroom. What other place are they going to police? Are they going to police your bills, your banking statements? Because that's where you need to draw the line. God wants his people free in every aspect of their lives because they will give you religion to control you, but they will never give you truth to free you. God gives us all things richly to enjoy, and that is sex. And that is my spouse. So to sit up here and to say these type of things coming from the pulpit, a lot of these preachers ain't going to admit that they got sexual hangups themselves. And so, man, I am tired of trying to be a good Christian and trying to live up to everybody's expectations of how I'm supposed to conduct myself when they don't even put that line or even put that judgment or even put that weight on themselves. So today is a day of liberation for both of us. I'm not going to be the good Christian that you deem me to be. And that's the God knows truth. Because, you know, in my own personal life, I have tried to be real with certain people. And the crazy thing about it, even being real and transparent still isn't enough. And they still want to try to change you, even in a godly way. And I get the things that people say and do. But the one thing that I love about God, he accepts me as I am. When God begins to call me on the carpet for certain things, let God do the change. If it's certain things about a person's life that you can't accept, then hey, don't accept that person. Because all you're doing is wasting your time and they're going to be vexing you because they're going to be 100% of themselves. And you need to be 100% of yourself. So when it comes to this whole thing about sex and sexuality and sexual freedom, do not allow ministers, I don't care who the hell they are, to put you into any condemnation or any type of bondage. Because we all know what the word of God says. And people take stuff out of context. Sometimes they take it out of context on purpose. Sometimes they eisegete things on purpose. Sometimes they try to exegete the wrong way because you can rightly divide the word of truth and you can wrongly divide the word of truth and so the one thing that I want you to understand and I'm going to read this one scripture Galatians 5 starting at verse 13 going to 24 out of ESV for you are called to freedom and that's what God wants us to be that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free it is about being free For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity to the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. I want to stop right there. Because the one thing that I want you to see is that people are being consumed by this whole thing of being pure and purity culture and the crazy thing about it is that there's even toxicity even in that when you hear ministers say what they say about certain sexual things and trying to police people's marriages and God didn't call you to that yes you're supposed to watch for my soul but not police my bedroom and if granted if I take and I come to you in counseling and I'm telling you certain things that's different but if I'm not then who are we to take and say certain things from the pulpit that puts people in bondage because we are called and we are anointed as men of God to remove the burden and destroy the yoke the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing and so my thing is is that I'm not going to use my calling and use the platform and use the pulpit to put people into bondage because of my personal belief or my personal conviction, or even my personal theology, or even frustration. Because a lot of times, the people that speak against 
one thing the most are the ones that's doing it the most. And that's why you have scandal. And so my thing is, is that as a pastor, I'm going to be the realest pastor that you hear. I want you to be free in every aspect of your life. And I'm going to tell you and I'm going to give you the game free of charge because it is a game out here. Half of these ministers know that most people do not read and people will take it as face value because it came from pastor so-and-so's mouth, apostle so-and-so's mouth, bishop so-and-so's mouth. And then they won't even go behind it and check to see if it's right. I give you this charity begins at home. People swear up and down it's the Bible, but it's not. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Everybody swears that that's Bible, but it's not. And so I'm telling you right now, man, don't allow people to use fear tactics to scare you into certain things. And people will use fear tactics, the fear of the devil, the fear of going to hell as a weapon, as a control mechanism to get you to line up and follow them. Because if I give you an imaginary devil, I'm the only one that can take it off of you. And at the end of the day, you have to realize that there is no devil. Because you didn't break the hedge. If you break the hedge, then the serpent comes. And what I mean by break the hedge is break the covenant. So if you haven't broken the covenant, how can the serpent get in? The serpent only gets in when you let him in. When you break the hedge. So how many hedges are being broken by so-called ministers? Because now you're putting a person in a position where they have gotten used to certain sexual things. And because of your personal conviction and belief, now you didn't tell me, now you have told me that I'm going to go to hell because I'm participating and me and my wife are doing certain sexual things. No affair, no pornography. We're not in a polyamorous relationship. We're not swinging. We're not open. But we're doing things just with us. And now you're telling me because of this, I don't open up the door to the devil. I don't open up the door to demon spirits and I'm going to hell. Where does that say in the Bible? Because you just got it from wherever you get it from. And the crazy thing about it is that, man, there's so much ignorance out here. And people are more inclined to pick up ignorance to go with the reason why they do what they do. Instead of looking into truth. And this is what I mean. So I'm going to tell you, yo, if your spouse has signed up for that, you better see where they're getting it from. If they done got it from the pastor or whoever their minister is, then ask them, why, why are you co-signing on that? Because it's not in the Bible. And so there's two things. Either they believe it because they believe that it's revelation coming from the person's mouth or they have a personal problem with you. Now, if it's a personal problem, then yeah, we need to get that thing ironed out. We need to go to counseling and let's not go with counseling at our church. Let's go to somebody that does not know neither one of us. Who's unbiased. And then we can get this whole thing fixed because if it's like that and the Bible does say that we should be rendering due benevolence unto each other, then we need to get the issue fixed because if we're not rendering due benevolence to one another, then the enemy will come in. Because of our inconsistency. Because when I married you, my body belonged to you and your body belonged to me. We belong to each other. We submit to one another. We render unto each other due benevolence. Now granted, if there isn't going to be any sexual activity, then we need to come to an agreement for that for a specific time and even season. But the one thing that I'm starting to see right now is that there's sexual manipulation. 
and the sexual manipulation comes because of the fear tactics. The sexual manipulation comes because of manipulation and lies. And now sexuality is used as a weapon. Affection is used as a weapon. And then we wonder why our sanctified spouses are down the street or across the county with somebody else or even in another state with somebody else because we did not do our due diligence to render due benevolence and to keep the serpent out because we embraced a lie and we turned that lie into truth and the Bible says that if the light in you is darkness how great is that darkness because truth is light truth is revelation and the revelation is that God ordained the union between husband and wife before he ordained anything in ministry. And that's the God knows truth. Because when we go back to Genesis, I don't see offices of ministry. I see husband and wife. Because our first father said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his own wife. And the two of them were naked and not ashamed. So don't allow anybody to shame you because of your sexual activities between you and your spouse. I don't care what it is. If you ain't feeling humiliated, then don't allow people to put shame and condemnation on you. And that's the God knows truth. And that's the reason why I wrote my book, so that people can be free. And you need to draw a line in the sand and say, nah, the apostle is not coming up in here. The bishop is not coming up in here. The prophet is not coming up in here. Especially if y'all come in with that stuff that can't even be found in scripture. And so I want you to get the book. I want you to go through Deuteronomy to see what is lawful and unlawful. And you're going to find, you ain't going to find in there Oral sex, you ain't going to find in there anal. You ain't going to find in there BDSM. You're not going to find in there none of that. Now, we can even go over here to talk about sexual immorality. And what that basically means is selling off. If I'm not prostituting myself or prostituting my wife, I'm not being sexually immoral. And so we just got to begin to embrace that there are certain things that we like that we like to be touched certain ways and that there is a ministry that you perform unto your spouse by touching them a certain way by sexing them the way that they want to be sexed by loving them and caressing them and giving them intimacy the way that they want it it's more than just the five love languages but we got to be people who are about truth Sexual truth, sexual freedom, and sexual trust. Do you trust me enough? Because both of us are going to walk in our truth in this house. Because the one thing about marriage is this, is that it burns off any type of mask. And you should be able to be 100% of yourself. You should be able to be naked before your spouse before each other, before the Lord. And not be ashamed. Man, please. There's so many people that are in bondage because they can't freely express themselves. They can't freely express themselves in their home. They can't freely express themselves at the church. They can't freely express themselves in the bedroom. And that's where it needs to stop. So I'm telling you right now, don't let nobody hold you in check. Let me finish reading this scripture. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. 
But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, like I said, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those that do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And so the thing is, is that if we're not doing orgies, if we're not sexually immoral, immoral, If we're not flirtatious or we're not giving ourselves over to toxic sensuality, then what? What is the gripe? What is the beef? And so I'm telling you right now, don't allow anybody to throw you into condemnation. Be who you're going to be. Be who you're going to be. Have the sex that you want to have. And don't allow anybody to put you into type of bondage, not even yourself, trying to jump through hoops, walk on eggshells to people's expectation, trying to get a blessing. You bless your spouse, and that is how you get the blessing. Because in blessing your spouse, you bless yourself, you bless the house. It's not about pastor so-and-so. It's not about his wife. It's not about the congregation. It's about how you minister unto the title of husband, the title of wife. And those titles are more important in your house than the title of apostle, the title of prophet, pastor, teacher, whoever. And don't allow any type of teaching that's going to put you in bondage in your house, in your bedroom. Because if it's going to be you and your wife, you and your husband, let that be it. Nobody else. And that's the God knows truth. And keep the serpent out of your house directly and indirectly. And sometimes we can let the serpent in and break the hedge indirectly by allowing these lies, these little foxes to come in. They taking and chipping away at the at the little pieces until the serpent is able to come in. So guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. And so today I'm not judging nobody. I'm not judging nobody's sex life because I'm not called to watch your bedroom. I'm called to watch for your soul. And that's the God knows truth. I'm not watching your wallet. Because you have some pastors, man, they they voyeurs. They looking for opportunity to come in and scoop up your husband or scoop up your wife. I'm being real. And this is one of the reasons why I wrote this book and I'm going to do some revisions. I got another book coming up. And a matter of fact, I'm going to start another podcast and probably another church. Because I'm tired of seeing people bound. I am tired of seeing people not being able to freely express themselves. I am tired of seeing people being put in a box by religious systems. Sometimes they put themselves in a box. Sometimes other people put them in the box. Not realizing that God wants you to be free. And that we need to begin to embrace certain things that bring us free. Now we can't embrace everything. But the things that bring freedom, the things that that help us operate in truth and to operate in integrity, And to operate in keeping the duty of living up to our vows and fulfilling our vows, we hold on to those things. Because I'm tired of seeing Christian marriages divorce. And the reason why people divorce is over communication, sex, money, and kids. And these are the conversations that we need to have prior to the marriage, but we make a lot of assumptions in the dating phase in Christianity. We can't make these assumptions any longer. You can't put your whole 
bank or your whole wide that your marriage is going to be blessed because you were celibate the whole time. You can still get divorced. You can still end up having an affair or being a victim of an affair. So don't just put all your eggs in one basket of celibacy and abstinence and think that, yo, we're going to be exempt from the problems of life. Man, please. Please. You got to do work. And trust me, believe what I say. That you can still have a jacked up marriage even though you waited till you was married to have sex. And some of you right now, even though you had sex prior to the marriage, some of your marriages are blessed. And some of your marriages, where the fire go? Because you did not keep up what you were doing when you initially got together. And that's where the fire went. You didn't maintain the fire. You didn't keep putting logs on the fire. That's where it went. That's how we can say the fornicating days were better than the married days. The reason that that is, is because, yeah, in the fornicating days, we was adding fuel to the fire. And now that we done got married, we done got lazy. And we ain't putting no wood on the fire. We stopped having date night. We stopped having sex before church. Because some of y'all used to fornicate before y'all went to church. And then asked God to forgive you in church. And then went back home and had fornication again. But now, we married. We got covenant. Where'd it go? I tell you where it went. It went because you got lazy. It went because you did not keep up what you started. And that's what happens to a lot of couples. A lot of people are not going to admit that they're sexually frustrated with themselves and with their spouse. Because some of y'all, y'all know how y'all like it. Y'all know how y'all want it to be brought. And that's the God knows truth. So, hey, I am Brother Leon and I am done for today. I thank you for your time. We're going to talk some more about sex, but we're going to do it on another day. You guys be blessed. Walk in the truth that makes you free every day. Follow Brother Leon on all social media outlets. 